Listen, man, before we go into this video, I want to ask y'all, by the end of this video, who will we hate more, Dwight Howard or Shaquille O'Neal? Leave it in the comment section right now. Shaquille O'Neal and Dwight Howard have a ton in common, like a truly eerie amount. Same draft situation, same mentor, same career decisions, feuds, free throw problems, and crucially, the same cultural references. Those similarities drew a lot of mockery from Shaq. And as Dwight's career has underperformed its initial promise, that distinction has drawn a lot of mockery from Shaq too. Let's start in the summer of 2004. The Orlando Magic, after years of playoff disappointment, finally crumbled for real. The past season had been a train wreck. They fully lost veteran star Grant Hill to scary medical problems, fired coach Doc Rivers after a horrible start, and won Damn. just 21 games while young Damn. superstar Tracy McGrady became more and more disgruntled. The silver lining to that dreadful year was winning the draft lottery. With the first pick, Orlando took a risk, selecting high school big man Dwight, Dwight Howard over more established Smith? NCAA <laughs> champion yeah, center J.R. Smith. But what next? Despite Howard begging him to stay, T Mac wanted out. The Magic we'll had to make a trade, and there was one obvious. Hey, no cap, bro. I never really thought about this. I think T Mac should have stayed, man. I ain't going High on. key. High key. Because <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what he did in Houston from like. 04 to 08. And then by the time 08 came, man, Dwight Howard was Dwight Howard. So that's tough. First round exits. That's all that it was, bro. Bro, bro, like I fact check it. Y'all fact check me. But I believe it was just a ton of either A injury or B first round exits. And T Mac is one of my favorites. Not doing the typical, I like him, but I'm a hate on. No, 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 I love Tracy McGrady, bro. But he should have stayed, in my opinion. I ain't gonna lie. That, that would have went crazy. That would have went crazy. Potential partner. The LA Lakers, who were dealing with a similar issue. Shaquille O'Neal had demanded a trade after eight wild but successful years in LA concluded with a lot of drama. Shaq, of course, was drafted by Orlando in 1992, became an all-star rookie there, developed into a true superstar under coach Brian Hill, and even reached the finals before bolting to LA in 96. I didn't even know coach. And Orlando return was <laughs> enticing to both parties, and the idea of a Dwight Shaq tandem was fascinating, but the trade match just wasn't right, especially since Shaq was most attracted to the idea of playing with McGrady. In the end, McGrady got dealt to the Rockets for a huge package centered around Steve Francis. A couple weeks later, Shaq landed 200 miles away in Miami. Over in Orlando, Dwight's first couple seasons didn't go quite like Shaq's had. For one thing, the Magic didn't immediately treat him as a centerpiece or even as a center. The 6'10-ish Howard played power forward alongside the likes of Tony Battee and Kelvin Cato. He struggled to get touches among scorers like Francis and Hill and Hito Turkoglu. That was the big story around Dwight's first ever game against O'Neal in the Heat. Shaq dominated, then offered some advice to a young Dwight who was sad he wasn't getting the ball. But Brian Hill, the same guy who had coached Shaq in Orlando, took over Howard's sophomore year and mm. gradually realized Dwight should play center. Yo, the spider web is really spider webbing right now. No cap, man. Damn. <laughs> what you mean by that, man? Like the connections, they're just, you know what I'm saying? Shaq's old coach. Shaq, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I just, damn, I'm really, I'm really invested right now. No cap. Shaq does take a plot twist here. He'll turn on the way. He was a little short for the position, but rapidly adding strength. By the time the Heat and Magic met for back-to-back -back games in 06, Dwight matched up with Shaq quite a bit with mixed results. The Heat dominated those games and ended that year winning Shaq his fourth ring, but Howard was beginning to break out. And by the next season, the Magic knew they had another star center on their hands. With Francis gone now and more chances to score, Dwight played his way to his first all-star selection in 07, although not the starting center spot. That went to Shaq, even though he'd barely played that year because of injury. Low bro the two of them had a fun little dance-off on the practice floor in Vegas, I then Dwight this. played wonderfully in the main event. No beef detected. Not yet. If 06-07 wasn't Dwight's breakout season, then the next one definitely was. Orlando hired Shaq's old coach from Miami, Stan Van Gundy, and gave Richard Lewis Another a Shaq huge contract to serve as Dwight's co-star. Dwight improved, the magic improved, and battles against Shaq's heat started to tip the other way. 
Shaq was slowing down big time at this point, increasingly prone to injuries, foul trouble, and clashes with coach Pat Riley. It got bad enough that in February of 2008, Miami pulled the plug and traded Shaq to the Suns. You don't even look happy in this picture. Dwight. Yo, looking back, his mustache was like crazy nasty. <laughs> 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 Like nah, just how, Shaq with just a mustache is so crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's an imposter. Like this is not even his real mustache. He looked like Cliff Paul, but like for Shaq, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Where does Shaq Paul work at, bro? <laughs> February of 2008, Miami pulled the plug and traded Shaq to the Suns. Dwight, like everyone else, was stunned. But he pointed out that Shaq was Superman and Superman would make it work in Phoenix. And Dwight didn't choose that honorific at random. Of all of Shaq's self-cultivated nicknames, Superman might be his favorite. He has a Superman tattoo, he surrounds himself with Superman stuff, the dude even starred in a movie based on one of DC Comics' Superman offshoot characters. Dwight clearly was well aware of this nickname, which made All-Star Weekend later that month interesting. It was a big weekend for Dwight. He'd been voted into the Eastern Conference starting center spot West. vacated when Shaq yeah, got mom. traded West. In fact, for the first time in his career, Shaq wasn't an all-star at all. And Dwight kind of took over as the headliner of the weekend, though he missed Shaq's presence there. Howard also participated in the dunk contest and as part of the presentation, <laughs> teased the possibility of a Superman costume and separately considered Gerald a Shaq Green, man. Dwight went the Superman route, Got donning a cape dude. and a big ol' S for the soaring dunk that won the contest, but it wasn't really regarded as a tribute to That's Shaq. That's an eight in 2022. Dwight was introduced as Superman Thanks. at the main event the next night and sort of apologized to the absent Shaq for, you know, infringing on his persona. Shaq was not into it, scoffing at Dwight claiming the title without having won anything greater than a dunk contest. Let's just pause quickly to acknowledge that grown men quarreling over who gets to cosplay as a comic book character is extremely dumb, and this is gonna get dumber. Nah, you don't get it. You don't get it, bro. It's that competitive spirit. In them. Mm. Oh, God. Come on, bro. That will to win, you know what I'm saying? Not everyone has it. It's like, Chad, imagine like SJ hits a three, says I'm him, and then Curry walks down the court, hits a three back. No, I'm him. And then that's just the whole series of beef. Oh, God. That's really what this shit is. But Shaq's actual point was interesting and echoes throughout a lot of what's to come. Shaq is very keen on the mythology of the big men, the true centers. He grew up idolizing Kareem, and when he got to the league, he felt like he had to earn the respect of greats like Hakeem and Patrick. Those centers of the 90s put the young upstart O'Neal through a lot before he emerged as an elite big man. Show the fuck he did. went through epic playoff battles and even had some beef along the way. Shaq earned his legendary status because he put up unbelievable numbers against legendary bigs for teams that won it all. It's not like Shaq was quiet and humble before he proved himself as a winner, but especially with the benefit of hindsight, Shaq feels that the more superficial embellishments of superstardom have to be earned. So yeah, Dwight winning a dunk contest and leading Orlando to one playoff series win later in 08 wasn't enough for O'Neal. The big guy oh. practically spat at the suggestion that Dwight might be the next Shaq or even that such a thing was possible. Healthy and productive again in Phoenix, Shaq returned to the 2009 All-Star Game and went out of his way to embarrass Dwight, who just laughed along with it, after having leaned even heavier on the <laughs> Superman stuff in the dunk contest the night before. When they finally met again in a real game, Shaq showed up wearing a Superman t-shirt and called out young Dwight's lack of championships. In an earlier Sports Illustrated interview, he'd belittled Dwight as a big guy just like any other, a guy who could run and jump but didn't have championships, a copycat whose early career was just oh, a cheap replica man. of all the things O'Neal did when he was in Orlando. Hey! <sighs> listen, man. Listen, 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 listen. I'm on Shaq's side so far. I don't know about you. I don't know about oh, you. Hey. Amen. Amen. At this point, what has Dwight done? At this point, at this point in the story, what what has Dwight done to earn the moniker of next Shaq and Superman, aside from number one overall pick, Orlando Magic, center, big dunk so far i'm 50 50 because i see why shaq but so far i might even say i gotta be 55 45 on team dwight bro because it's like 
You was uplifting me and shit, and then I wore Superman one time, and now I ain't done shit. Like, hey, right, bro, I just got here. Damn. No, but it's it's fine to it's fine to unlift Dwight, but like, you ain't me, little bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're not little bro in me. I'm a grown man built like Dwight Howard. You know, I'm built like Dwight Howard. The shoulders is in. And I'm Shaq. And I'm Shaq. You're washed. That's what you're washed. Bro. <laughs> you're, you're washed. Bro. That's what you see. Hey, Shaq, wish I weren't Dwight. I, I'd be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you got four rings, yeah. Where your All Star game at last year, pussy? <laughs> like, I'm just saying, in, in a vacuum, Lil Broing Dwight sounds crazy, but in this scenario, I'm Shaq. I'm taller than you. I'm bigger than you. I'm more accomplished <laughs> than you. I was better in Orlando when I was there. I'm better in my peak. Who are you, Lil Bro? Like, come on. <laughs> I'm just, crazy. I'm just saying, like, I, I get where Shaq's coming from. I ain't gonna lie. I don't think it's, that, I don't think it's that bad so far. It sounded genuinely hurt. He wanted guidance from Shaq, not disparagement. Anyway, the younger of the two Superman held his own that night, and Orlando got the win. Look at him. Shaq performed Shaq's still admirably for yeah, a guy he, he about was to turn 37, him, but the highlight of his evening was this very oh, un shaq like shit. flop. That flop ignited a mini beef between Shaq and his old coach, Van Gundy. Howard mostly tried to stay out of it, but did seem to get a kick out of saying he respected his elders. The Magic finished the 09 season with 59 wins. Dwight would take home Defensive Player of the Year. And as the playoffs approached, Sports Illustrated dropped a big cover story on Howard that opened with an anecdote about Shaq calling him an imposter. That article went on to distinguish Howard as sillier and smilier than the stereotypical badass big man Shaq epitomizes. But it did point out that the Superman stuff wasn't the only way Howard seemed to mimic Shaq. He also, for instance, was prone to celebrating tough finishes by staring at his hand. Dwight oh, also man. literally impersonated Shaq, so there's that. Hello, Mr. Kill O'Neal. I can shoot free throws, but I can dunk the ball. But silly or not, copycat Get or not, him. Dwight was threatening to invalidate Shaq's main talking point. He was winning. Howard's magic cruised through the first two rounds of the playoffs, then upset LeBron James and the Cavs to face Shaq's old pals for the championship. O'Neal handled the occasion like but, any adult would, by sh posting oh, on Twitter God. the night of game one of the finals. A Woj column a few days later went in on Shaq. It had Kareem himself questioning the maturity of a 37-year-old, Howard once again expressing his dismay in the middle of the finals, and anonymous sources proclaiming Shaq wanted the magic to get swept in the finals just like his own 95 magic got swept, just so Dwight couldn't claim anything over him. Orlando mm. did get one win <laughs> in an other. <laughs> Shaq is a bad guy. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, what are we talking about, bro? What are we doing, bro? I don't want him to be able to say that he got one, bro. Hell no. Nah. Get your... Bro, what? Bro? You, you supposed to have four? Really, three? Wade carried you... Hold on, my bad. With the shoulders. Wade carried you, <laughs> pussy. You got three. Like, see, what are we doing, bro? I'm just saying, I don't, I, I, like I always say, when it comes to the motherfuckers in the top 20 all time, you don't get to that stage without some sort of like insane ultra competitive side of you. Like truth be told. So Shaq, arguably top five ever. If you want to really talk about it, some people can argue he's top three ever. He's a competitive ass motherfucker. Like same thing with MJ, same thing with Kobe. Braun be hiding it, but in, in secrecy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know I know he's Lil Bro and KD I in the background. Bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, he's bro. definitely Lil Bro and KD in the background. So like I, I I just see I just see where Shaq is coming from. And it would be crazy. If let's say I'm MJ and, and motherfuckers is telling me that Kobe's the next MJ and Kobe wasn't even winning like three rings yet. You know what I'm saying? Like that just sounds crazy. Like you have done nothing. But from Dwight Howard's perspective, I get it. Like, bro, I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying, live my best life. I didn't choose the coach to be here. I didn't choose to be drafted here. I'm just balling out. And here comes Shaq hating. So I I get it from both sides, but I'm just saying, Shaq, I, I get you, man. I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get it. I get Shaq too, yo. If I was built like Mario Chalmers, I'm playing like I'm the best player in the world and I'm acting like it too. So I I, I feel it. I feel it. I'm still Team Dwight at the moment, but I, I see it. Wise lopsided finals defeat, so take that, Shaq, I guess. The following <laughs> season, Shaq joined LeBron in Cleveland and fully embraced the role of anti-Dwight villain. His vendetta had only been inflamed by Dwight going commercial with the Superman persona. You're really lucky Superman was so close by. In the few minutes Shaq played during the first Cleveland-Orlando matchup, he insisted on guarding Dwight one-on-one, -on -one, 
courting the booze of an Orlando crowd that once loved him and actually helping push Dwight into foul trouble as the Cavs got the win. O'Neal played Howard well again later that season, getting physical at every opportunity, then taunting him after the game about who the real Superman was, which once again hurt Dwight's feelings and invited some thoughtful critique from LeBron. Shaq's main quibble had shifted. He was up in arms that Dwight wouldn't always guard him one-on-one, -on -one, that the Magic sent double teams at him, whereas he'd spent his youth guarding guys like Hakeem and Ewing straight up. Oh, LeBron man. once again was like, eh, he's just grumpy about the Superman stuff, which, yeah. Later in February, we were treated to an exciting duel in which Shaq and Dwight went directly at each other, each having some big moments in what ended yeah! up being a Magic win. The Celtics broke up a potential Cavs Magic playoff rematch on their way to the 2010 finals. Good. So Shaq, desperate for one last ring, spent his next and final season in Boston. He was too old and beat up at this point to hang with younger players. Dwight toppled him in their first matchup, and in their final matchup, dropped 33 points on a flurry of dunks, post yeah. moves, and face-up buckets. Shaq said face farewell up. at the end of that season, that using his insane. retirement <laughs> press conference to Bang hammer home the Superman and ring stuff. <laughs> but he also said the beef was all marketing and gave Howard some credit as a great big man. And then Shaq faded into the sunset, enjoying his post-playing career quietly and out of the public eye. No. Oh, no, sorry, I'm actually getting word that Shaq immediately took a job with TNT and spent the rest of the decade criticizing Dwight. In 2012, when Dwight was at he his really all-star peak, from the league Shaq was calling TNT. LA's Andrew Bynum the superior player. Yeah, respect it, Andrew shit. Bynum is a true big man. Back you down, jump hook. Dwight Howard has one or two moves on the block. Dwight was just oh, tired of Shaq man. at this point, disappointed that a dude done playing was still talking. No, I, was I heard that one. Sit down and get on with his life. He don't play no more, so <laughs> that's the point of talking trash. Dwight hadn't stopped doing that's impressions, his though. Every day it's a question. <laughs> that's Shaq, that's Shaq. That regular season ended with the super awkward falling out between Howard and Van Gundy that would end with the coach getting fired. You know, when it comes out that, uh, you know, Shaq was right. Uh, one of the highest profile guys in the league <laughs> has, you know, asked. Yo, wouldn't that be crazy, bro? Like, Stan was right. like, you know what, when it comes out that Shaq was right all along, that would have been. <laughs> You know, when it comes out that Superman was really the Green Lantern, it's just like, yo, that shit would have been crazy. Or, um, you know, as coach to be fired, I mean, it's going to be a story. Yeah, what's our main concern right now? Another eerie parallel oh, between Dwight and Shaq. Even with Van Gundy gone, Dwight made another Shaq-like move, demanding a trade and eventually joining Kobe and the Lakers. While the Magic figured oh out a way God, to move on with that. Shaq said Dwight had big shoes to fill and found yet another big man critique to harp on. That Dwight was a pick and roll player, not a Yo. true old school center like, say, a Lopez twin. Uh, Dwight Howard, who's a pick and roll player, you know, some people say he's the best, but me, being an old school big man, I'm gonna go with Robin Lopez and Andrew Bynum. And if he wasn't talking to me, <laughs> Yo! <laughs> What? We ain't that young. Y'all call me old, but we damn well ain't that young. I ain't watch sports media, but I watch basketball. I ain't never got that from Bynum and Lopez. Bynum maybe for a year. But I ain't never got that from Robin Lopez that he fucking with Dwight Howard. Oh, hell nah. Come on, Shaq. He was rapping. Like I said before, you will get devoured. But don't you ever call me Dwight Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight was crazy. still very sick of all of this. Just sit back and relax. You know, you did. Your, your time is up. But something interesting and unexpected time was happening. Is up. Time Dwight is clashed now. with Kobe, and not in the we hate each other but we're still winning way that Shaq did. Howard's performance flagged, the Lakers never really came together under Mike D'Antoni, and they flamed out early in the playoffs. That whole season, Shaq insisted his haranguing of Dwight was meant to motivate to inspire him with anger, the same way Shaq's okay, elders Itachi. have gotten him Damn. I was taught to play with ferocity. I need to be you upset. true hate. You know? Yo, this is Shaq for real. Little bro. Come on, little bro. Little hey, bro. No. <laughs> Maybe next time, Sasuke. <laughs> little bro. That an idiot. <laughs> you must kill your best friend. <laughs> All right, bro. I got out of here, man. He said in, in an article or on TV about me for me to respond 
But Dwight, I think correctly, identified that his personality wasn't like Shaq's, nor was his style, nor was the environment in which he played. He wanted heartfelt advice from Shaq, not motivational prodding, but he received nothing of the sort, not even when Shaq came to LA for his jersey retirement. Shaq you rejected the idea of connecting you... <laughs> with Dwight and continued sniping from afar. That continued as Howard's career slumped further. Dwight moved on to the Rockets. Shaq criticized him for it, still insisting he was trying to motivate the big guy, not pick on him, but I don't know, this just feels like picking on him. Dang, In yo, early this 2016, is crazy. <laughs> a struggling Dwight hired Shaq's agent, which led to rumors the two big guys would work together on rehabilitating Howard's reputation. But All right, bro. At, at this point, bro, there, there was already so many things lining up that was parallel to you and Shaq's career. But then you chose to want it to be traded to the Lakers specifically to play with Kobe Bryant. What the fuck did you expect? And now you're signing with, with Shaq's prior agent? Come on. Like, at some point... And, and you picked the whole Superman nomaker and went along with it. At some point, Dwight, there's accountability on your end. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You're, 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 you know what I'm saying? You're trying to tease Shaq as well. Let's, let's stop, let's stop acting like he was fully innocent in this scenario, bro. Yeah, there's a lot of Kowinky dinks going on, man. Like you said earlier, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It's looking like a duck again, bro. He. <laughs> He literally, he literally has had the same coaches, jerseys, agents, best of friends. Like, this is crazy, bro. That's Hell what I'm nah. saying, bro. Hell nah. When Dwight visited the TNT studio for a pretty intimate, vulnerable interview, Shaq was elsewhere posting on Twitter. <laughs> The beef has only gotten dumber in the years since, during which Howard has bounced from team to team, alternating injuries with okay-ish performance. Dwight is still impersonating Shaq, like, really a lot. Well, you gotta get his name right, uh, uh, Charles. Shaq is that still too. rapping about that Dwight. Too. I, I swear to God, if another motherfucker was mocking me like that, Sage, nah, it's, nah I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm shit talking to, bro. Come yeah. on, bro. Hey, like I said, fifty-five, forty-five, man, make it fifty-fifty again, man. Damn, I'm. I truly undecided. I, I see it, man. Come I, on, I'd be bro. like, all right. I'd be like, all right, nigga. Shut <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, I just know how I'd be. Like, like if I'm Dwight, I'm still talking crazy, little bro. But if I'm Shaq Big Ass, I guess this is what I do for Shaq. If I'm Shaq Big Ass, all right, bro. <laughs> like, I, I'm really wilding. I'm wilding, bro. Last man who called himself Superman still ain't got no rings. And Pussy. when Dwight got roasted on an episode of Wild and Out, Shaq jumped all over it, igniting a very stupid back and forth. When Dwight started the 1819 season with an injured butt, Shaq absolutely loved it. And just to add insult to a lot of injury, he went on to declare Giannis Adetokounmpo the NBA's new Superman. I'm denouncing my Superman ship and I'm giving it to the Greek freak. And that's Damn. basically where the beef sits. No, that's, that's insane. I, I, I need to know when this clip was. Because if he gave that before Ooh. the ring, like, okay, Shaq, that's, that's kind of crazy, bro. That's kind of crazy. You were on Dwight's dick this whole time because he didn't earn this Superman nomaker. But now you're just going to give it to Giannis because of, I don't know. I, it, it depends on when he did it, but that's, that's crazy. Here's what I uh, see off of searching it. Shaq, three years ago, said that Giannis is better than him at his age. I'm trying to find the Superman one. 2018. Oh. Nah, now, that's, now that's crazy. 2018. Shaquille O'Neal declares Giannis Antetokounmpo to the Superman. All right, 5248. 5248. I ain't going to lie. That, that kind of swing me a little. That's, just, that's kind of insane, bro. That's kind of insane. Yeah, let me go back to my 55. Let me go back to my the Greek freak. And that's basically where the beef sits after well over a decade of shifting goalposts. Dwight Howard first drew Shaq's ire by imitating some of what made Shaq Shaq. The fact that Dwight's entrance into the spotlight coincided with Shaq's demise only made the big man more prone to lashing out, shifting his yeah. target with every move Dwight made. Of course, the truth is that despite early appearances, some of them intentional, Dwight isn't that much like Shaq. Among other things, he has failed to follow through on the early promise of his career, but Shaq hasn't oh, backed fuck. off at all. This is a beef of ego. The elder player found the younger one disrespectful. The younger player found the older one cruel. 
Neither is particularly graceful in making his point, so we've ended up with a very long, very public, very stupid beef. Now, th this is what would have happened if MJ was on TNT and Kobe just never won anything. This is exactly yep. how that shit would have panned out. And, you know, Dwight Howard just got the worst case scenario of like, okay, I'm going to be the one compared to a top five player of all time and not win shit until like my later years. So, and that's tough. At the end of this video, um, it's 50-50 to me, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, Shaq was on dick for, like, a uh, like 15-year period. But at the same time, people were crowning Dwight Howard and directly comparing Dwight Howard to Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Dwight was enabling those conversations. He was mocking Shaq's fucking voice and the way that he talks. You know what I'm saying? Doing moves that coincided with Shaq's career. And for Shaq to, you know what I'm saying, just hold him to that standard. If you want to be compared to me, let's hold you to that fucking standard. I don't blame Shaq as well. But at the same time, bro, when we talk about dick riders, Shaq was on Dwight's dick. I, I'd have to say, bro. It's like, it's like you know how I used to get the Your Sage gaming comments, bro? Yeah. It's like, imagine if I came out this motherfucker, distorted every fucking thumbnail I did, tried to say the same shit he does, play the same games, all that shit, and then I was like, man, fuck it, bro. I'm better than Rage. It's like, all right, bro. I, all right, eh? <laughs> So I see where Shaq coming from. Then at the same time, though, bro, and I'm at the 55. Because Shaq did a lot of gawk gawk for no reason at some point, bro. Like, all right, you out the league. I go to the Lakers. Why are you speaking on it? I lost. Why are you speaking on it? We, I'm done playing. Why are you still speaking on me, bro? And then the Giannis thing was nasty, Chad. I, maybe yeah. <laughs> we, you think we're overblowing it? No, bro. Giannis in 2018 could have been better than Dwight's ever been to you. Cool. The fact that you did that and he ain't win, and your whole thing for was for Dwight was that he couldn't beat like LeBron and Kobe. You're crazy. You're yeah. Crazy. Because in 2018, Giannis didn't even have an MVP. Like, he didn't even have that to his name. Didn't have a DPOY to his name. It was literally just stats and what he stood for. And if we want to make that same argument for Dwight before he even made the finals, then it was fine to call him the next Shaq, to be honest with you. If that's what we're going with. But it didn't seem like he had that same energy for Dwight like a decade ago. So, um, great video. Great video by The Secret Base. Really loving the content that they've been putting out. Uh, it looks like you guys have been as well. So, let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Go ahead and watch this video right here. Um, this is a video from their channel about Rondo and Ray Allen. Uh, you'll probably hate Rondo after it, though. But um, we'll catch you on the next one, man. Peace out. Peace.